Hey guys, my name is Osama, and today I'll be delving deep into the realm of nuclear reactors. Now, nuclear reactors are seen as these complicated, mysterious devices you might have seen in The Simpsons, but if you're interested in learning about more about nuclear reactor technology, or maybe you wanna start a career in this industry, or maybe invest in some upcoming technologies, this video is for you. I'll break down reactor types into four different reactors. Number one, power reactors, two, breeder reactors, three, research and test reactors, and lastly, transport reactors. Yes, nuclear reactors do much more than produce clean energy. They produce radiomedical isotopes to fight cancer. They are used to propel marine vehicles, and they're also can be used to create even more fuel for create more energy. So let's start off with number one, power reactors. Power reactors are just like the name implies, they create energy, lots of energy. They are responsible for creating huge amounts of base load power for nations across the world. In the world right now, there are around 440 operating nuclear reactors. In total, they produce 10% of the world's energy. Now this number is projected to rise to around 900 operating nuclear reactors by around 2050. But with the advent of new technologies like small modular reactors, we're seeing that there are potentials to drive down cost, make nuclear power more accessible to other developing nations. Okay, what are the advantages of nuclear power reactors? Zero greenhouse gas emissions during generation of electricity. Also, they take up less land. Okay, so reduced environmental footprint and many, many more benefits, which I will discuss in my other videos. Now let's go into breeder reactors. Number two are breeder reactors. Breeder reactors are also a type of reactors which produce electricity. So they are power reactors as well, but they're different in a sense where they produce more fuel. So they actually produce fuel as they operate. To give you an understanding of how breeder reactors work, I'll have to give you an idea of how nuclear fuel works. So in terms of radio, radioactive isotopes, there are two categories. One are fission, fissionable isotopes, and second are fertile isotopes. In nature, naturally, the fission isotopes are very, very rare. So U-235, which is a fission isotope, only makes up 0.7% of the world's uranium. Okay, it's a very, very small, small percentage. And to mitigate that, what, what, the, what the industry does is we utilize an enrichment process, okay? So we utilize centrifuges, which filter out this material and increase the amount of U-235 in the fuel. It's an expensive process. In the 1950s and 60s, breeder reactors, there was a lot of interest in this technology because of how sustainable it is. Breeder reactors potentially have the, have the ability to even burn used fuel. Okay, so interest in this technology pretty much died out very quickly because of large uranium reserves that were found throughout the world and also advancements to the enrichment process. But there are operating reactors, breeder reactors across the world and it's something that can really close the nuclear uh, fuel cycle in the future. Number three, research and test reactors. Like I said, nuclear reactors don't only produce power, okay? They are also used as neutron sources for experiments. Now research reactors or test reactors, they don't actually produce energy. So they don't have that turbine, they don't produce steam, rather they're just a neutron source. Okay. These can be found across the world at various university institutions. So universities, master's students or PhD students do a lot of testing when it comes to research and test reactors. Um, an example of this is the NRU, National Research Universal Reactor, uh, based at Chalk River. It's used to test fuel bundles. It was also used to produce radiomedical isotopes, okay? Um, it was once used to produce almost 40% of the radiomedical isotopes for cancer therapy and diagnosis across the world, okay? So these reactors save millions and millions of lives across the world. Uh, some of these medical isotopes that they produce are cobalt-60. Cobalt-60 use, is used for cancer therapy and cancer diagnosis and also molybdenum-99, moly-99. Power, some power reactors are also used to produce radiomedical isotopes such as the CANDU Canadian Deuterium Nuclear Reactor. Number four, transport reactors. Transport reactors are interesting because they are perfect for marine technology, okay? Submarines. Uh, aircraft carriers, 
uh, icebreakers. So the reason why these reactors are perfect for marine transport is because of the advantages that they provide, such as ability to provide huge amounts of energy for propulsion of these vehicles. Number two is you don't have to refuel them every so often, like a gasoline powered car. Nuclear uh, fuel lasts long, long times, sometimes several years before you need to refuel, right? Um, what's different about these reactors is that instead of using four to 5% enrichment of fuel, which is used in conventional nuclear reactors, power reactors, vehicles, these transfer technologies use a very high level of enrichment, around 80% or above. And they are also the first examples of SMRs, small modular reactors, factory built reactors, which drive down costs and allow for a simplistic design. Uh, this is a technology which is actually being explored across the world. For example, implementation in off-grid communities, rural Arctic communities, or simply even being used in cities. So there you have it. Those are the four types of nuclear reactors, and they are power reactors, breeder reactors, research and test reactors, and lastly, transport reactors. Hope you enjoyed this video. Till next time. Thank you.